Hello, welcome to Flick and Dinky Pi Voice show. Meet Flick. Like majority of Pi Voice robots, Flick was built based on the first principles. It is not a copy of somebody else's design, and we can even say it has some innovation over similar robots. Namely, all robots that are using small, some call microservers, use them in joints, even for the knee joint. Flick has a server that moves shin at the knee as high on tie as possible and thus allowing angular momentum of the whole leg to be smaller. Also, as much as bigger counterparts, Flick has full freedom of its legs, three separate servers to allow each leg to reach quite a big space under its body. Since Flick doesn't have a feedback on servers, as I used relatively cheap ordinary remote control servers, the compliance of the leg is achieved by using TPU material, which is slightly bendy, on the feet where two material 3D printing was really useful. Speaking of feedback, there is potentially really useful feedback that Flick is providing, current consumption of each leg. That's currently used as a protection from half of positions servers can get into. Remote control servers are notorious to strip their own gears if they get stuck somewhere. Flick is constantly checking levels of current, and if they exceed nominal values for a prolonged period of time, we're talking about hundreds of milliseconds, it will cut off power to the servers. Another use for reading of server current is at calibration to determine real server speeds. Since we mentioned calibration, Flick is coming with a whole suite of handy applications, some necessary, like ability to calibrate angles for each joint. Aside of that, there is a feedback from its sensors, and the most interesting new sensor Flick is sporting is Time of Flight Sensor, VL53L5CX, nicely named, sensor which reports up to 64 zones while it is used here in 4x4 square. The top row of those zones are used to look over the obstacles into distant walls and determine Flick's orientation relative to the walls uh, it looks at, while bottom three rows are used to determine angle of the floor to the body and if there are any obstacles in four directions. Last but not least, Flick has fashionable round display, not the expensive kind that came to the market after Pi Voice 2022 was announced, but short simpler square display and a cheaper one as well that is covered with a thin layer of plastic to pretend the shape that can be seen in a fake color LED the separate electronics, sensors and Raspberry Pis the display is showing if Flick is working on DC adapter or a battery also, it shows the state of the battery as we can relatively easily calculate milliamp hours consumed by Flick, electronics and servers separately and then combine them in the software together, the current sensors uh, the power control of servos, biggish MOSFET that turns them on and off, brought it to almost a complete proper power management of the robot. And now meet our flock of sheep and some farming equipment. This is bale grabber, inspired by real life bale grabbers. And this is the barrel to carry cattle feed. And this is obstacle course with all the farming equipment and other bits and pieces we've created. Even now, it's interesting seeing Flick almost developing real-life traits, like slightly delayed stand pose with leg readjustment when stop moving forward. It's so lifelike. Or when Bluetooth was stalling in oversaturated 2.4 GHz spectrum, and Flick continued doing what it wanted to do instead of what it was told. Or, wait, Flick, leave Bertie alone. Okay, that was Flick. Now over to Dinky. This is Dinky sitting in his cockpit. And this is his Dinky robot arm he can control. The arm has one hand with two fingers and an eye between them. Dinky and his robot arm ride on Flick, the robot dog without a head but with two brains. And all this makes perfect sense. Dinky's arm is designed to be versatile and as small and as lightweight as possible. It has five joints and a, and a gripper, all powered by Dynamics or Robotics servos. These servos are linked together and they use a half-duplex serial connection to the Raspberry Pi, which needs some extra electronics and some custom software to make it work. The arm is controlled by ROS. It was a, quite an interesting challenge to make it run on a Pi Zero 2. It can be remote controlled to go to predefined poses via MQTT from Flick's other brain and a game controller. The onboard camera is used with OpenCV to detect apples and determine their position in 3D. The idea was to pick apples completely autonomously, but reliable and precise control has proven to be a bit of a challenge. Just a few more weeks or months, and I'm sure it will work perfectly.